the covenant broken and the consequences. The golden calf incident, context of the incident, Moses on Mount Sinai. While Moses is on Mount Sinai receiving the law from God, the Israelites at the base of the mountain grow restless. In Moses' prolonged absence, they feel leaderless and uncertain. Demand for Gods The people approach Aaron, Moses' brother, demanding that he makes gods for them to follow. This reflects their insecurity and influence of surrounding cultures accustomed to physical representations of deities. Creation of the Golden Calf Aaron's Compliance Aaron yields to the people's demands. He collects gold from the Israelites and fashions it into a golden calf, and this act represents a direct violation of the commandment against idolatry. False worship. The people uh, declare the calf as their god who led them out of Egypt, attributing God's actions to this idol. They engage in a celebration that includes feasting and revelry, indicative and of pagan worship practices. Significance of the breach, breach of the covenant. The worship of the golden calf represents a significant breach of the covenant between God and Israel. It is an act of idolatry directly contravening the first two commandments given on Sinai. Failure of leadership and faith. The incident highlights the failure in leadership by Aaron and a lack of faith among the people. They quickly revert to familiar pagan practices in the face of uncertainty. Moses' Response and Intercession Moses' descent and anger. Upon descending the mountain and seeing the idolatry, Moses is furious. He smashes the tablets of the law, symbolizing the breaking of the covenant, punishment, and intercession. Moses orders the Levites to punish the idolaters, leading to the death of about 3,000 men. He then intercedes with God on behalf of the people, pleading for the forgiveness and mitigating the full extent of divine wrath. Renewal of the Covenant God's mercy and renewal. Despite the severity of the sin, God in His mercy agrees to renew the covenant. Moses returns to the mountain to receive a new set of tablets symbolizing the restoration of the covenantal relationship. Conclusion A lesson in fidelity and consequences. The Golden Calf Incident is a pivotal event in Israelite history serving as a stark lesson about the consequences of infidelity to God's commandments. It underscores the seriousness with which God views idolatry and the need for steadfast faith and obedience. The episode also highlights God's willingness to forgive and renew the covenant, demonstrating His enduring commitment to His people despite their failings. Moses' Intervention Immediate Reaction to the Idolatry Destruction of the Tablets Upon descending Mount Sinai and witnessing the idolatry, Moses responds with righteous indignation. He throws down and shatters the tablets of the law, symbolizing the breaking of the covenant by the Israelites. Confrontation and Cleansing Moses confronts Aaron and the people about their sin. He takes decisive action to cleanse the camp, including grinding the calf to powder, scattering it in water, and making the Israelites drink it. Interceding with God Preventing Complete Destruction in the face of God's anger and his threat to destroy the people, Moses intervenes. His intercession is a pivotal moment as it prevents the complete destruction of the Israelite nation. 
appeared to God's reputation. Moses appeals to God's reputation among the nations. He argues that if God were to destroy the Israelites after bringing them out of Egypt, it would reflect poorly on his character and intentions. Reminding God of his covenant promises, Moses reminds God of the promises made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He appeals to God's faithfulness and covenantal relationship established with the patriarchs. The role of Moses as mediator. Mediator between God and Israel. Moses' role as mediator is exemplified in this incident. He stands between a holy God and a sinful uh, people pleading for mercy and reconciliation. Symbol of Intercessory Prayer Moses' actions serve as a powerful example of intercessory prayer. He does not excuse the Israelites' sin but instead appeals to God's mercy and faithfulness. Outcome of the Intercession God relents. Moved by Moses' plea, God relents from his plan to destroy the Israelites. This act demonstrates God's responsiveness to intercession and his willingness to forgive. Renewal of the Covenant Following this intercession, Moses ascends the mountain again to receive a new set of tablets. This act symbolizes the renewal of the covenant and God's ongoing commitment to His people despite their failings. Conclusion, a testament to leadership and mercy. Moses' intervention, intervention during the Golden Calf incident is a testament to his leadership and the efficacy of intercessory prayer. It highlights the role of a mediator in bridging the gap between the Holy God and a sinful people. The incident underscores the themes of divine mercy, forgiveness, and the importance of remaining faithful to the covenant. God's Relenting and Renewed Covenant God's Response to Moses' Plea display of divine mercy. In response to Moses' fervent intercession, God demonstrates her mercy and willingness to forgive. This response is a powerful testament to God's character, one that balances justice with compassion. Relenting from complete destruction. God's decision to relent from destroying the Israelites in response to their Idolatry highlights his patience and enduring commitment to the covenant despite the people's disobedience. Renewal of the Covenant Moses' Second Ascent Following the intercession, Moses ascends Mount Sinai once again. This ascent is uh, significant as it symbolizes not just the continuation of God's relationship with Israel but also its renewal. Receiving the new tablets. God provides Moses with a new set of tablets replacing the ones broken in the aftermath of the golden calf incident. These new tablets are a symbol of covenant restoration and a reminder of God's willingness to renew his commitments with his people. Reaffirmation of the law. The renewal of the tablets also serves as a reaffirmation of the law and it underscores the enduring nature of God's commandments and expectation of Israel's obedience. Significance of the Renewed Covenant Grace in the Face of Unfaithfulness the renewal of the covenant in the wake of Israel's idolatry is a profound demonstration of grace. It shows that God's commitment to His people is not easily broken even in the face of significant unfaithfulness. A lesson in repentance and forgiveness. This event serves as a lesson for the Israelites and for the future generations about the importance of repentance and the availability of forgiveness. It illustrates that while sin has consequences, God's grace and mercy are always accessible. 
continuation of the divine plan. The renewal of the covenant signifies the continuation of God's salvific plan for Israel and by extension for all humanity. Despite Israel's failures, God remains steadfast in His desire to use them as a vehicle for blessing to the world. Conclusion, a testament to divine forgiveness. God's relenting and the renewal of the covenant with Israel serve as powerful reminders of His mercy, forgiveness, and unwavering commitment to His people. This episode in the Exodus narrative highlights the dynamics of sin, repentance, and redemption, emphasizing the resilience of the divine human relationship even amidst failure and disobedience. Aaron's Faith The Controversy Surrounding Aaron's Role Key Role in the Golden Calf Incident Aaron, Moses' brother, and appointed high priests replayed a pivotal role in the creation of the golden calf. His actions, which included fashioning the calf and facilitating the idolatrous worship, were in direct violation of the commandments that Moses was receiving on Mount Sinai. Lack of Immediate Punishment Despite his significant role in the incident, Aaron was not immediately punished in the same manner as the other Israelites were who participated. This absence of direct punishment has been a topic of debate among scholars and theologians. Interpretation of Aaron's Faith Delayed Punishment some interpretations suggest that Aaron's punishment was delayed and manifested in his death outside the promised land. This perspective views his inability to enter Canaan as a consequence of his involvement in the idolatry. Divine Selection and Grace Others argue that Aaron's established role as a high priest was maintained due to divine selection and grace. Despite his sin, God continued to use Aaron in a significant leadership role, similar to other biblical figures who erred but were still used by God for his purposes. Comparison with other biblical figures Biblical precedents. The Bible contains several instances where figures committed serious transgressions, yet continued to be used by God. Examples include King David, whose adultery and murder did not prelude him from being a central figure in Israel's history, and Peter, who denied Christ, yet became a foundational leader in the early church. Theme of Redemption and Grace These examples underscore a recurring theme in the biblical narrative, God's ability to redeem and use flawed individuals for His purposes. This theme reflects the profound nature of divine grace and forgiveness. Aaron's Continuing Role His Priesthood Despite his involvement in the Golden Calf incident, Aaron continued to serve as a high priest a role of significant spiritual leadership within the Israelite community. Symbol of Atonement and Intercession As high priest, Aaron's role in making atonement for the people and interceding on their behalf was a powerful symbol of God's ongoing relationship with Israel despite their collective and individual sins. Conclusion complexity of divine judgment and mercy. The debate surrounding Aaron's faith following the Golden Cup incident highlights the complexity of divine judgment and mercy in the biblical narrative. Aaron's story serves as a testament to God's ability to use imperfect individuals for His divine purposes, illustrating themes of redemption, grace, and the endurance nature of God's call and gifts. The Levitical Priesthood Establishment of the Levites Set Apart for Service 
In the aftermath of the Golden Calf incident, the tribe of Levi is set apart for special service in the tabernacle. This di distinction comes partly as a result of their stand against idolatry during the crisis. In Exodus chapter 32 verse 26 to 29. Role similar to deacons, the Levites' role in the tabernacle is akin to that of deacons in the Christian church. They are responsible for assisting with and maintaining the tabernacle and later the temple playing a crucial role in the religious life of Israel. Unique position among the tribes, no land inheritance. Unlike the other in Israelite tribes, the Levites are not granted a territorial inheritance in the promised land. Their calling is distinctively spiritual and communal. Dependence on other tribes. The Levites depend on the support of the other tribes of Israel. This support comes in the form of tithes and offerings which provide for their livelihood and enable them to dedicate themselves fully to their religious duties. Aaron's family as the priestly lineage. Aaronic priesthood. Within the tribe of Levi, Aaron's family holds a special status. Aaron, as the brother of Moses and the first high priest, establishes a priestly lineage. The lineage is responsible for the more sacred aspects of religious service, including offering sacrifices and entering the Holy of Holies. Hereditary Priesthood The priestly duties are passed down by birthright within Aaron's family. This hereditary system ensures continuity and preserves the sanctity of the priestly role. Responsibility of the Levitical Priesthood Service in the Tabernacle and Temple The Levites are charged with various duties related to the Tabernacle and later the Temple in Jerusalem. This include maintenance of the sanctuary, playing music during worship, teaching the law, and assisting the priests. Spiritual leaders and teachers. Beyond their tabernacle duties, the Levites are served as, as spiritual leaders and teachers within the Israelite community, helping to instruct the people in the law and the maintaining the religious traditions. Symbolic significance. Representation of the total dedication to God. The Levites symbolize total dedication to God's service. Their lack of land inheritance signifies a life wholly devoted to spiritual and communal duties. Intermediaries between God and the people. In their service, the Levites act as intermediaries between God and the Israelites, facilitating worship and religious practices essential to the covenant relationship. Conclusion A sacred calling, the establishment of the Levitical priesthood represents a sacred calling setting apart the tribe of Levi for a divine service in the tabernacle and later the temple. Their role is integral to the religious and communal life of Israel, symbolizing a life of devotion and service to God. The Levites and ironic priests play critical roles in maintaining the religious practices, traditions, and spiritual education of the Israelite community. System of Sacrifice in Leviticus Overview of Levitical Sacrifices Comprehensive Sacrificial System The Book of Leviticus presents a detailed system of offerings and sacrifices integral to the religious life of Israel. These sacrifices range from personal to communal and serve various purposes, including atonement, thanksgiving, and purification. Types of offerings and sacrifices Burnt offerings offered for aton atonement of general sin and expression of devotion to God. 
grain offerings symbolizing thanksgiving and recognition of God's provision, peace offerings representing fellowship with God, often including a communal meal, sin offerings for atonement of specific and intentional sins, restoring the relationship with God, guilt offerings addressing sins requiring restitution symbolizing the resolution of guilt. Priestly Code, Leviticus chapter 1 to 16. Detailed Rituals Procedures. The first part of Leviticus, known as the Priestly Code, provides specific uh, procedure for conducting various sacrifices. These detailed instructions ensure that the sacrifices are carried out in a manner that honors God's holiness. The role of priests. The priestly code underscores the central role of Aaronic priests in the sacrificial system. They act as mediators between God and the people, performing the rituals and managing the tabernacle. Holiness Code in Leviticus chapter 17 to 27. Instructions for the community. The latter part of Leviticus, the Holiness Code, extends beyond the sacrificial system. It provides guidance on how the Israelite community can maintain holiness in their daily lives. Moral and Ethical Living This section covers various aspects of moral and ethical living, including dietary laws, sexual conduct, and social justice. It reflects the belief that holiness is not confined to the tabernacle but permeates every aspect of life. Significance of the Sacrificial System Atonement and Reconciliation The sacrifices are a means of atoning for sin and reconciling the people with God. They symbolize the seriousness of sin and the necessity of seeking God's forgiveness. Symbolic representation. The sacrificial system with its ritual and bloodshed symbolizes the cost of sin and the need for purification. It points to the concept of substitution and the need for a mediator between God and humanity. Conclusion. A blueprint for worship and holiness. The system of sacrifice outlined in Leviticus provides a blueprint for the Israelites' worship and their quest for holiness. It underscores the importance of approaching God with reverence and living a life that reflects His holiness. This system plays a crucial role in religious communal life of Israel's teaching them uh, about God's nature, the consequences of sin, and the pathway to forgiveness and reconciliation. Liturgical Calendar and Special Feasts in Leviticus Introduction to the Liturgical Calendar Framework for Worship and Remembrance The Book of Leviticus establishes a liturgical calendar for the Israelites a schedule of special days and years dedicated to worship and remembrance. This calendar structures the religious year intertwining worship with the rhythm of the daily life. Key Feasts and Holy Days Sabbath Day Observe weekly the Sabbath is a day of rest and worship, a recurring reminder of God's creation and Israelite's covenant with Him. Passover or Pesach, commemorating the Israelites' deliverance from slavery in Egypt, Passover is celebrated with a meal featuring unleavened bread symbolizing the haste of their departure. Feast of Unleavened Bread Immediately following Passover, this week feast involves abstaining from leavened bread, recalling the Israelites' uh, exodus from Egypt. Feast of First Fruits or Bikorim. This feast marked the beginning of the harvest season, offering the first fruit to God as a token of gratitude and recognition of His provision. Feast of Weeks Shavuot or Pentecost. Occurring 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits, this feast celebrates the wheat harvest and According to later Jewish tradition, the giving of the Torah 
on Mount Sinai. Feast of Triumph or Rosh Hashanah. This marks the beginning of the Jewish New Year, a time of reflection, repentance, and renewal. Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur, the most solemn holy day. It involves fasting and repentance, seeking atonement for sins of the past year. Feast of Tabernacle or Sukkot. Uh, commemorating the Israelites wandering the wilderness and God's provision during that time, this feast involves dwelling in temporary shelters or Sukkot. Special Years of Observance Sabbatical Year Every seventh year is a year of rest for the land, symbolizing reliance on God's provision and care for the land. Jubilee Year Occurring every 50 years, the Jubilee is a time of liberation and restoration where debts are forgiven and slaves are freed. Land that was sold returns to its original family, reflecting a restoration of social and economic balance. Significance of the liturgical calendar, rhythm of worship and life. The liturgical calendar integrates worship into the daily life of the Israelites, creating a rhythm of work, rest, and remembrance. Remembrance of God's actions. These feasts and observances serve as continual reminders of God's actions. In Israelites' history, reinforcing their identity as God's chosen people. Community, cohesion, and identity. The communal observance of this feast strengthens social and religious bonds among the Israelites, fostering a sense of community and shared heritage. Conclusion, a sacred cycle of time. The liturgical calendar and special feast established in Leviticus create a sacred cycle of time for the Israelites. They provide structured opportunities for worship, remembrance, and community celebration, ensuring that the Israelites regularly recall and rejoice in God's faithfulness and their covenant relationship with him. Covenant renewal and the Ark of the Covenant, importance of God's presence. Shekinah in the wilderness, manifestation of the divine presence. Shekinah, the glory of God, in the wilderness journey of the Israelites, the Shekinah often understood as a visible manifestation of God's presence and glory played a central role. It was a tangible sign of God dwelling uh, among His people. Visual representation. The Shekinah is typically represented as a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, guiding the Israelites through their sojourn in the wilderness. Symbolism and significance. God's direct involvement. The presence of the Shekinah symbolized God's direct involvement in the lives of the Israelites. It was a constant reminder that they were under the divine guidance and protection. Distinguishing Israel from other nations This divine presence set Israel apart from other nations. It was a visible sign that they were a people chosen by God and led by Him. Symbol of God's faithfulness. The Shekinah also represented God's faithfulness to His promises. Despite the challenges and uncertainties of the Jordan, the presence of the Shekinah reassured the Israelites of God's commitment to lead them to the promised land. Role in guidance and decision making. Directional guidance, the movement of the Shekinah, whether Settling or lifting determined the Israelites' movements and encampments. When the cloud lifted, they journeyed. When it rested, they encamped. Centrality in Israelite camp. The Shekinah 
particularly over the tabernacle, was centrally located within the Israelite camp, signifying that God was at the heart of the community and its activities. A source of comfort and awe. Comfort in God's presence. For the Israelites, the Shekinah was a source of comfort, providing assurance of God's presence and care, especially in times of uncertainty. Oh, and reverence, the visible manifestation of God's glory also inspired awe and reverence. It was a continual reminder of the holiness of God and the importance of obedience to His commandments. Conclusion Divine Presence as Guiding Force The Shekinah in the wilderness was more than a navigational aid. It was a profound expression of God's intimate relationship with Israel. It guided them not just in their physical journey but also in their spiritual development as a nation. The presence of the Shekinah was a testament to God's ongoing involvement in the life of His chosen people, leading them, providing for them, and sanctifying them for His purposes. The Word became flesh, incarnation in Christian theology. Concept of Divine Presence in Christianity Incarnation as the fulfillment of divine presence. In Christian theology, the concept of divine presence is profoundly embodied in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. The belief that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us in John chapter 1 verse 14 marks a pivotal moment in the understanding of God's interaction with humanity. In John chapter 1, 1 verse 14 a theological cornerstone the word as jesus in the gospel of john the word logos in greek refers to jesus pre-existing with god and then taking on human form this verse is a foundational statement about the nature of christ as both fully divine and fully human dwelling among humanity the Greek word used for dwell can be translated as tabernacled or pitched his tent. This language intentionally echoes the Shekinah in the wilderness, presenting Jesus as the new and ultimate manifestation of God's presence with his people. Significance of the Incarnation God's Direct Involvement in Human History the Incarnation represents God's direct involvement in human history, not just as guiding force but as a participant in human life and experience. Revelation of God's Nature Through Jesus, the nature and character of God are revealed in Christ. The abstract concepts of God's love, grace, and mercy become concrete and accessible. Bridge between divine and human Jesus as fully God and fully man bridges the gap between humanity and the divine. He is the mediator reconciling a holy God with a sinful humanity. Theological implications of the word became flesh. Salvation through Jesus. The incarnation is central Christian soteriology, the doctrine of salvation. The belief is that through Jesus' life, death and resurrection, humanity is offered redemption and reconciliation with God, model for humanity. Jesus serves as the perfect model for human life. His teachings, actions, and character provide a template for Christian living, embodying the ideals of love, service, and sacrifice. Conclusion a new understanding of divine presence. In Christianity, the concept of the word became flesh brings a new understanding of divine presence. It signifies God's ultimate commitment to His creation, a presence that is not just guiding from above but sharing the human experience. The incarnation of Christ is a central doctrine in Christianity Redefining the relationship between God and humanity, 
and offering a profound insight into the nature of God as intimately involved and relentlessly loving. The Eucharist Christ Real Presence Central Tenet of Christian Worship The Eucharist in Christian Practice In Christianity, the Eucharist, also known as Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper, is a sacrament that commemorates Jesus' Last Supper with His disciples. It is considered the most significant manifestation of Christ's presence among believers. Transformation of Bread and Wine The central belief is that in the Eucharist, bread and wine are transformed into the actual body and blood of Christ, although the specifics of this belief vary among different Christian denominations. Theological Foundations Scriptural Basis The foundation for the Eucharist is rooted in the accounts of the Last Supper in the Gospels and Paul's letter, example in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 28, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26, where Jesus takes bread and wine and declares them to be his body and blood. Real Presence The doctrine of real presence asserts that Jesus Christ is truly present in the Eucharist, not merely symbolically or metaphorically but in real and substantial way. Echoes of Shekinah Continuity of Divine Presence The belief in Christ's real presence in the Eucharist can be seen as a continuation of the Old Testament concept of the Shekinah. Just as the Shekinah was the visible sign of God's presence with the Israelites, the Eucharist is the tangible presence of Christ with believers. Intimacy of the Presence The Eucharist echoes the intimacy of the Shekinah offering a profound experience of God's nearness. In the Eucharist, believers partake of Christ himself, symbolizing a deep union with him. The Eucharist as a Communal Act Gathering of the Faithful The celebration of the Eucharist is a communal act uh, bringing Christians together worship and fellowship. It reflects the communal nature of the Church as the body of Christ. Remembrance and Proclamation The Eucharist is a remembrance of Jesus sacrifice on the cross and a proclamation of his death and resurrection until he comes again. It is both a looking back to the Last Supper and a looking forward to the eschatological fulfillment. Spiritual and Transformative Effects Nourishment and Grace Participating in the Eucharist is believed to provide uh, spiritual nourishment and grace. It is an integral part of Christian spiritual life, contributing to the believer's growth in holiness. Unity with Christ and the Church Through the Eucharist, believers experience a unique unity with Christ and a deeper communion with other members of the Church. Conclusion A Sacred Mystery the Eucharist stands as a sacred mystery in Christian faith, embodying the real presence of Christ. This sacrament is a profound expression of God's closeness to humanity, a continuity of divine presence that began the shikana and culminates in the ongoing presence of Christ in the lives of believers. New Tablet, Aaron's Rod Mana Contents of the Ark of the Covenant Overview of the Ark's Contents Sacred Articrafts The Ark of the Covenant housed in the most holy place of the tabernacle contained three items of profound religious significance, the new tablet of the commandments, Aaron's rod, and a jar of manna. Each item symbolized key aspect of God's relationship with the Israelites. New Tablets of the Commandments Symbol of the Covenant 
the stone tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments represented the covenant between God and Israel. They were a tangible reminder of God's law and the Israelites' duty to adhere to it. Renewal after the Golden Calf Incident The replacement of the original tablet shattered by Moses in response to the Golden Calf Incident symbolized the renewal of the covenant and God's mercy in forgiving Israel's transgressions. Aaron's rod, sign of legitimate priesthood. Aaron's rod, which miraculously budded, blossomed, and produced almonds in Numbers chapter 17, verse 8, was a sign of God's selection of Aaron and his descendants for the priesthood. Authority and leadership. The rod signifies God-given authority and leadership within the Israelite community. It was a reminder of the rebellion of Korah and the subsequent confirmation of Aaron's priestly lineage. Jar of Manna Reminder of Divine Provision The Jar of Manna, the miraculous food provided by God during Israelites' wanderings in the wilderness, symbolized God's continuous provision and care for His people. Three Testaments to Dependence on God The Manna was the daily reminder of the Israelites' dependence on God for sustenance. It encouraged trust and faithfulness in God's provision. Combined Symbolic Significance Covenant Authority and Provision uh, Collectively, the contents of the Ark represented the foundational elements of Israel's relationship with God. The Covenant or the Law, the Divinely Ordained Priesthood, Aaron's Rod, and God's Provision and Care, the Manna. Centerpiece of Israel's worship. The ark with its contents was the centerpiece of Israelites' worship. It symbolizes God's presence, guidance, and the sacredness of the covenant relationship. Conclusion, a testament to God's faithfulness. The ark of the covenant with its sacred contents served as a powerful testament to God's faithfulness to Israel. It held tangible reminders of God's law, the legitimacy of the priesthood, and His continual provision. As the most sacred object in the tabernacle, the ark was a constant symbol of God's presence and the enduring nature of His covenant with His people. The Lost Ark and Messianic Expectations The Lost Ark in Jewish Tradition Disappearance and Significance The Ark of the Covenant, central to ancient Israelite worship, was lost during the Babylonian captivity. Its disappearance has been subject of fascination and speculation, carrying significant theological and eschatological weight in Jewish tradition. Messianic Expectations In Jewish eschatology, there is a belief that the Ark will be recovered or revealed in the Messianic Age. The Ark's recovery is often linked to the coming of the Messiah and the restoration of a purified worship in a rebuilt temple. Christian Interpretation The Ark in the New Testament Book of Revelation In the New Testament, the ark is mentioned in the book of Revelation in chapter 11, verse 19 to chapter 12, verse 1, where its appearance in heaven is seen as a symbolic precursor to the revelation of the woman clothed with the sun, often interpreted as Mary or the church, symbolic link to Mary. In Christian theology, especially within Catholic and Orthodox traditions, the Ark is seen as a type of Mary, the mother of Jesus, just as the Ark contained the Word of God in stone's tablet, Mary carried the Word made flesh in her womb. 
the Ark and Mary, typo typological connections. Mary as the Ark, as the new Ark. The parallels drawn between the Ark and Mary include the Ark's role as the dwelling place of God's presence and Mary as the bearer of Christ. Mary is venerated as Theotokos or God bearer, echoing the Ark's role as the carrier of the divine. Fulfillment of Testament Symbolism This typological connection suggests that the physical loss of the Ark is fulfilled in the spiritual reality of Mary bearing Jesus. It reflects a shift from the Old Testament's physical symbols to their fulfillment in the person and work of Jesus and his mother Mary. Eschatological and Theological Implications Hope and Restoration The expected return of the Ark in Jewish eschatology symbolizes hope and restoration. For Christians, its symbolic fulfillment in Mary points to the realization of God's promises through Jesus. Transition from Old to New Covenant the transition from the Ark of the Old Covenant to its New Testament fulfillment represents the shift from the law to grace from the Old Covenant with Israel to the New Covenant established by Christ. Conclusion Continuity and Fulfillment The narrative of the Lost Ark and its eschatological and theological interpretations in both Jewish and Christian traditions highlights a continuity of divine promise and fulfillment. In Jewish thought, it remains a symbol of anticipated Messiah and restored worship. In Christianity, a typological fulfillment in Mary underscores the transition from the old to the new covenant represent a deeper realization of God's plan of salvation. Mary as the new Ark of the Covenant Mary's parallel to the Ark in Christian theology Mary as the Ark of the Co New Covenant Theological veneration In Christian theology, particularly within Catholic and Orthodox tradition, Mary is venerated as the Ark of the New Covenant. This comparison draws a parallel between the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament and Mary's role in the New Testament. Bearer of Divine Presence Just as the Ark carried the tablet of the law, Aaron's rod and manna, symbols of God's presence and covenant, Mary bore Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, in her womb. This parallel positions Mary as the vessel through which God's presence entered the world in a new and profound way. Biblical Foundations of the Parallel Annunciation Narrative The parallel is drawn from the Annunciation Narrative in Luke chapter 1, verse 35, where the angel Gabriel tells Mary that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and the power of the Most High will overshadow her leading to the birth of Jesus. The term overshadow is reminiscent of the divine presence overshadowing the ark. Litany of the Virgin In the Litany of the Virgin Mary is invoked as the Ark of the Covenant, highlighting her role as the bearer of God's presence and linking her to the Old Testament Ark in a typological sense. Typological Connections in Scripture Luke's account of the visitation. The account of Mary's visitation to Elizabeth in Luke's gospel echoes the story of King David bringing the ark to Jerusalem. Elizabeth's exclamation upon Mary's arrival parallels David's awe in the presence of the ark. Parallels in the Old and New Testaments. The ark's journey to Jerusalem and Mary's visit to uh, Elizabeth both involved elements of joy, awe, and the recognition of God's presence. In both narratives, there is a sense of the sacred arriving in a holy but unexpected way. Theological Significance Fulfillment of 
uh, Old Testament imagery, the parallel between Mary and the Ark reflects a broader theme in Christian theology where New Testament fulfilled Old Testament imagery. Mary as the Ark of the New Covenant signifies a deeper fulfillment of God's plan of salvation symbol of God's incarnation. Mary's role as a mother of Jesus and the Ark of the Covenant underscores the mystery of the incarnation, God becoming human and dwell among us. Conclusion Mary as a symbol of the New Covenant In Christian theology, Mary parallels to the Ark of the Covenant serves as a profound symbol of the transition from the old to the new covenant it highlights mary's unique role in salvation history as the one who bore jesus christ bringing god's presence into the world in a new and transformative way this parallel underscores the continuity of fulfillment of divine revelation from old testament to the new testament Old Testament types fulfilled in Mary. Profound parallels in biblical narratives. Typological fulfillment. The narratives of the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament and Mary in the New Testament present a profound parallels. These typological parallels are seen as fulfillments of Old Testament types or pre Figurations in Mary, the mother of Jesus. Comparison between the Ark and Mary. Journeys of the Ark and Mary. Ark's journey to Obed Edom. In the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant is brought to the house of Obed Edom where it remains for three months. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11. Mary's visit to Elizabeth. In the New Testament, Mary visits her cousin Elizabeth where her greeting causes John the Baptist to leap in Elizabeth's womb in Luke chapter 1 verse 39 to 45. Mary stays with Elizabeth for about three months mirroring the ark stay. Expressions of joy and awe. David's joyful dance King David dances and celebrates with great joy before the ark in 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 14. John sleeping in the womb. John the Baptist leaps in Elizabeth's womb at the sound of Mary's greeting, a sign of joy and recognition of Mary's blessed state. Reverent acknowledgement. David's reverent questions. David expresses awe and wonder at the ark coming to him in 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 9. Elizabeth exclamation. Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit exclaims with joy and wonder about Mary's visit recognizes the blessedness of Mary and her child in Luke chapter 1 verse 42 to 43. Blessings upon the house. Blessing of Obed Edom Edom's house. The house of Obed Edom is blessed because of the ark's presence in 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 11. Blessing of Elizabeth's household. The presence of Mary carrying Jesus in her womb brings a blessing upon uh, Elizabeth's household. Theological implications. Mary is the new ark. This parallel suggests that Mary carrying uh, Jesus in her womb is the new ark of the covenant she bears within her the word made flesh just as the ark carried the word of god inscribed on stone tablets divine presence embodied in mary the divine presence is no longer symbolized by artifacts within the ark but is made flesh in the person of jesus this signifies a profound incarnation of God's presence. Conclusion Mary as the fulfillment of Old Testament typology. The parallels between the Ark of the Covenant and Mary 
highlights the typological fulfillment of the Old Testament of Old Testament in the New Testament. Mary as the Ark of the Covenant signifies the transformation of divine presence from a symbolically sacred object to the living reality of Jesus Christ. This parallels deepens the uh, understanding of Mary's role in salvation history and underscore the continuity of God's plan of redemption from the Old Testament. The ark symbolic contents and their fulfillment in Mary. Overview of the ark symbolic contents. Diverse symbolism. The Ark of the Covenants contained items of deep relig religious significance, the stone tablets of the law, a jar of manna, and Aaron's rod. Its item represented key aspects of God's interaction and covenant with Israel. Fulfillment in Mary and Jesus. Stone tablets and the Word made flesh. Old Testament. The stone tablets in the Ark bore the words of God's law symbolizing God's covenant and guidance. In the New Testament fulfillment in Mary, this symbol is fulfilled through Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh in John chapter 1, verse 14. Mary carrying Jesus in her womb parallels the ark, carrying the tablets highlighting the incarnation of God's Word in human form. Manna, or as prefiguration of the bread of life. Old Testament, the manna in the ark was the bread up from heaven that sustained the Israelites in the wilderness symbolizing God's provision. In the New Testament fulfillment, Jesus declares himself the bread of life in chap uh, John chapter 6 verse 35, fulfilling the symbol of manna. In Mary, this fulfillment is embodied as she bore Jesus who provides spiritual sustenance for humanity. Aaron's rod and the true high priest. The Old Testament, uh, Aaron's rod that bodied represented God's choice of Aaron as the high priest, a mediator between God and people of Israel. In New Testament fulfillment, Jesus born of Mary is recognized as the internal high priest. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. This fulfillment surpasses the symbolic role of Aaron's rod as Jesus becomes the ultimate mediator between God and humanity. Theological uh, Significance Mary as the Ark of the Covenant, the parallels between the contents of the new Ark and their fulfillment in Jesus, born of Mary, position Mary as the Ark of the New Covenant just as the ark was the sacred container of God's presence and covenant, Mary becomes the vessel through which God's ultimate plan of salvation enters the world. Continuity of Divine Revelation This fulfillment demonstrates the continuity of divine revelation from the Old to the New Testament. They show how New Testament events complete and transcend Old Testament symbols and types. Conclusion, a deeper understanding of salvation history. The fulfillment of the arts contents in Mary and Jesus offers a deeper understanding of Christian salvation history. It illustrates how key Old Testament symbols find their ultimate expression in the New Testament, particularly through the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Mary as the Ark of the Covenant embodies the, this fulfillment, symbolizing the living presence of God's Word, the true bread from heaven, and the eternal High Priest in Jesus Christ. Building and Blessing the Tabernacle Microcosm of Creation the wilderness, tabernacle as sacred space. Overview of the wilderness tabernacle, divine blueprints. The tabernacle as instructed in Exodus is not just a physical structure but a carefully designed sacred space. 
It was built according to a specific divine blueprint revealing deep symbolic meanings and corrections to the broader narrative of God's relationship with His creation. The tabernacle as a microcosm of uh, creation, reflection of cosmic order. The tabernacle's design and structure mirror the order and harmony found in the created universe. The attention to detail, precise measurements, and specific materials reflect a divine orderliness echoing the creation narrative in Genesis. Symbolic representation. Various elements of the tabernacle symbolize aspects of creation. For instance, the lampstand or uh, menorah can be seen as representing the tree of life or the light of creation, while the veil separating the holy of holies may symbolize the separation between heaven and earth. Sacredness and Purpose Dwelling Place of God The primary purpose of the tabernacle was to serve as a dwelling place for God among His people. This presence of God in the tabernacle made it most sacred space for the Israelites, center of worship and ritual. The tabernacle was the central place for Israelite worship and rituals especially for the offering of sacrifices. It was where heaven and earth were believed to meet, making it the focal point of divine human interaction. The Tabernacle and the Garden of Eden Echoes of Eden The Tabernacle also echoes the Garden of Eden, the original dwelling place of God with humanity. The presence of cherubim, the ark, the covenant, and the veil of the tabernacle are reminiscent of the cherubim uh, placed at the in entrance of Eden. Restoration of divine fellowship, the tabernacle represents a step towards restoring the divine fellowship that was lost in Eden. It symbolizes a re-establishment of the relationship between God and His people. The theological and eschatological dimensions. Theological significance. Theologically, the tabernacle demonstrates God's desire to dwell among His people and maintain a relationship with them despite their fallen state. Eschatological hope. The tabernacle also points towards an eschatological hope where God's presence will once again be fully realized among His people as prophesied in books like the Revelation. Conclusion, a symbol of divine presence and promise. The wilderness tabernacle is the profound symbol within the biblical narrative. It represents not only a sacred space for worship and sacrifice, but also a microcosm of the created order and a symbol of God's ongoing presence and covenant relationship with His people. It stands as a testament to the living intention to dwell among humanity and foreshadowing of the ultimate fulfillment of God's presence in the world. Symbolism and Divine Presence in the Tabernacle Reintroduction of Edenic Elements Echoes of Eden in the Tabernacle In the Tabernacle's construction incorporates elements that harken back to the Garden of Eden, creating a symbolic connection between the first dwelling place of God with humanity and this new sacred space. Cherubim as a link to Eden. The cherubim prominently featured in the tabernacle, especially on the Ark of the Covenant and the Veil, are reminiscent of the cherubim guarding the entrance to Eden in Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. Their presence in the tabernacle represents a symbolic reconnection with the divine presence that humanity experienced in Eden. Symbolism of the lampstand. 
representation of the tree of life. The lampstand or the menorah in the tabernacle with its intricate design and branches can be seen as symbolizing the tree of life that stood in the Garden of Eden. It serves as a reminder of the life and light that emanate from God. Symbol of Divine Illumination The light from the lampstand perpetually lit symbolizes God's presence and guidance. Just as the tree of life was a source of sustenance and blessing in Eden, the light of the lampstand represents spiritual sustenance and enlightenment provided by God. Divine Presence in the Tabernacle Manifestation of God's Theory The tabernacle was more than a place of worship. It was where God's presence visibly dwelt among the Israelites. The Shekinah, or Divine Glory, filled the tabernacle signifying God's closeness to His people. A return to divine fellowship. The presence of God in the tabernacle marked a step towards restoring the intimate fellowship that was lost after the fall in Eden. It was a space that where heaven and earth intersected, allowing the Israelites to experience a semblance of the pre-fall communion with God. Theological Implications Restoring and Hope The Edenic symbolism in the tabernacle speaks of God's ongoing plan for restoration and reconciliation with humanity. It serves as a sign of hope that the broken relationship between God and humanity is being mended. Continu continuity of Divine Plan The inclusion of Edenic uh, elements in the tabernacle's design demonstrates the continuity of God's plan from creation through the establishment of Israel as His covenant people. It shows God's unchanging desire to dwell among His creation. Conclusion, a symbolic meeting place of God and humanity. The tabernacle with its Edenic symbolism and manifestation of divine presence represents a sacred space where God and humanity meet. The cherubim lamp stamp and the overall design of the tabernacle served as powerful symbols of restoration of divine fellowship and the ongoing presence of God with his people. It encapsulates the theme of God's pursuit of his creation and God and his unending desire to restore the relationship that was broken in Eden. Sanctuary amidst chaos, the role of the tabernacle. The tabernacle is a heaven in the wilderness. Oasis of Divine Order In the midst of the chaotic wilderness, the tabernacle uh, stood as a sanctuary of divine order and presence. It was a structured, sacred space, contrasting with the unpredictable and often harsh conditions of the Israelites' nomadic life. Centerpiece of the camp Positioned at the center of the Israelite camp, the tabernacle was both literally and figuratively the heart of the community. Its central placement underscored its importance as the focus of divine human interaction. Symbol of God's steadfast presence Assurance of divine proximity, the tabernacle, provides a tangible assurance of God's continual presence among His people. Its permanence amidst the transient nature of the wilderness journey was a powerful symbol of God's unwavering commitment to His covenant. Visible sign of divine guidance. The presence of the cloud by the day and fire by the night over the tabernacle was a visible manifestation of God's guidance and protection. It served as a constant reminder that God was with them, leading and providing for them. Order within disorder. 
structured worship in an unstructured environment. The orderly worship and rituals conducted in the tabernacle provided a stark contrast to the disorderly environment of the wilderness. This structured approach to worship brought rhythm and regularity to the otherwise unpredictable life of the Israelites. Spiritual stability. The tabernacle served as the source of spiritual stability. The practices and ceremonies performed there provided a framework for communal and individual faith, anchoring the Israelites in their identity and purposes as God's chosen people. Theological Implications Reflection of God's Nature The orderliness and structure of the tabernacle reflects the nature of God as a God of order and purpose. It demonstrates that even in the midst of chaos, God's presence brings structure and meaning. Model for Faith and Turbulent Times The tabernacle symbolizes the principle that in times of turmoil and uncertainty, God provides a sanctuary. It is a model for finding spiritual solace and direction amidst life's challenges. Conclusion A Testament to Divine Faithfulness The tabernacle stands as a testament to divine faithfulness and presence amidst the chaos of the wilderness. It represents the physical and spiritual sanctuary offering order, stability, and a constant connection with God. In the midst of their uncertain journey, the Israelites found the tabernacle's place of divine order, a sanctuary where God's presence was assured and where they could connect the, with Him in worship and community. Parallels with other biblical centuries. The Tabernacle and Noah's Ark Divine Commission Century Noah's Ark Noah's Ark, as described in Genesis, was built according to God's specific instructions to provide refuge from the flood. It was a divinely appointed sanctuary that uh, preserved life and symbolized hope and new beginnings. The tabernacle, similarly, the tabernacle was constructed based on detailed divine instructions. It served as a spiritual sanctuary, preserving the covenant relationship between God and His people amidst the wilderness. Symbolic havens. Both the ark and the tabernacle represent safe havens amid a world of chaos and uncertainty. They are symbolic beacons of God's protection and presence. The promised land as a new Eden. Canaan as a Sabbath rest. The promised land, Canaan, is often de depicted in the Bible as a place of rest paralleling the concept of Sabbath rest. It represents a cessation of the Israelites wandering and a culminating of their journey towards a divinely promised home. Return to Edenic Conditions The imagery of the promised land flowing with milk and honey echoes the abundance and harmony of the Garden of Eden. It symbolizes a return to a state of blessedness and close communion with God. The Jordan River crossing the Exodus, symbolic parallel of deliverance. The crossing of the Jordan River by the Israelites under Joshua's leadership is often seen as paralleling the Exodus journey. Just as the parting of the Red Sea marked the beginning of the journey to freedom, the crossing of the Jordan signifies the fulfillment of that journey. Entry into a new phase. Both events mark significant transitions. The exodus from slavery to freedom and the Jordan crossing from wandering to settling in the promised land. They are pivotal moments of deliverance and fulfillment in the 
Biblical Narrative. Conclusion Continuity of Divine Sanctuary The parallels between the tabernacle, Noah's Ark, and the Promised Land illustrates the continuous theme in the Bible of divinely provided sanctuaries. This sanctuary offer refuge, symbolize a deeper connection with God, and mark significant transitions in the relationship between God and His people. They reflect the ongoing narrative of salvation, deliverance, and the fulfillment of divine promises throughout biblical history. The glory of the Lord, divine presence filling the tabernacle, the culmination of the tabernacle's construction, a significant theophany. The completion of the tabernacle is marked by a powerful theophany, a visible manifestation of God's presence. In Exodus chapter 40 verse 34, describes this moment as the cloud covering the tent of meeting and God's glory filling the tabernacle, symbolism of the cloud and glory. The cloud as a divine marker. The cloud symbolizes God's presence and serves as a divine marker of His approval and sanctification of the tabernacle. It indicates that the tabernacle is not just a human construction but is now imbued with divine significance. Glory of the Lord The glory of the Lord filling the tabernacle signifies God's taking up residence among His people. This glory is often interpreted as a visible, tangible sign of God's overwhelming majesty and power. Significance of God's presence in the tabernacle. In manifestation of God's covenantal promise. The filling of the tabernacle with God's presence is a fulfillment of His covenantal promise to dwell among His people. It is a physical affirmation of God's commitment to Israel. Transition from construction to worship. This event marks the transition from the construction of the tabernacle to its active use as a place of worship and communion with God. The divine presence transforms the tabernacle from a structure to a sacred space. Theological Implications God's Accessibility to His People the presence of God in, la in the tabernacle symbolizes the accessibility of God to His people. It demonstrates that while God is transcendent, He is also immanently present among those who seek Him, a model for future worship. The divine presence in the tabernacle sets a pattern for future worship in Israel. It in establishes the uh, principle that true worship is characterized by God's presence and glory. Conclusion, a profound encounter with the divine. The event of God's presence filling the tabernacle is a profound moment in the biblical narrative. It underscores the reality of God dwelling among His people and sanctifying the space for His purposes. This manifestation of divine presence serves as a constant reminder of God's nearness, majesty, and active involvement in the lives of the Israelites, setting a precedent for understanding the nature of sacred space and worship. The cloud as a sign of God's presence. The cloud over the tabernacle, symbol of divine presence. In the wilderness journey of the Israelites, the cloud over the tabernacle was a potent symbol of God's presence. This cloud was not just a natural phenomenon but a visible manifestation of the divine. Continuous Reminder the presence of the cloud serves as the continual reminder for, to the Israelites that God was with them, residing in their midst as they traversed the wilderness. Guidance and Approval Indicator of Movement The movement of the cloud was a key factor in the Israelites' journey. They would only break camp and move with the when the cloud lifted from over the, the tabernacle, signaling God's direction and timing. God's direct guidance. This dependence on the cloud 
Fourth movement underscored the Israelites' reliance on God for guidance. The lifting of the cloud was interpreted as divine approval and inter instruction to proceed, ensuring that their journey was aligned with God's will. Theological Significance God, God's Eminence and Transcendence The cloud symbolizes both the eminence and transcendence of God, while transcendent and majestic, God was also permanently present, guiding and dwelling among His people. Trust in divine providence, the Israelites' reliance on the cloud for movement was a practice of trust in God's providence and timing. It was daily exercise in faith, acknowledging God's sovereignty over their journey. A visible link between God and His people. Reassurance for God's protection, the cloud also represented God's protection over the Israelites. Just as the cloud shielded them from the harsh desert element, it symbolized God's shielding presence in their lives. Connection between the divine and the mundane, the presence of the cloud linked the mundane aspects of daily life and trouble with divine guidance infusing their journey with spiritual significance. Conclusion A Testament to God's Active Presence The cloud over the tabernacle stands as the powerful testament to God's active presence in the lives of the Israelites. It was a guiding force, a protective covering, and a constant reminder of God's intimate involvement in their journey. The, this visible sign of God's presence provided the Israelites with direction, reassurance, and a deeper sense of connection to the divine conclusion. The presence of God among his people. Significance of the tabernacle. The tabernacle as a divine dwelling place. Manifestation of God's desire to dwell among his people. The construction of the tabernacle was a tangible expression of God's desire to live among his chosen people. This physical structure symbolized God's intimate involvement in the daily lives of the Israelites. Center of Worship and Community As a central place for worship and community gatherings, the tabernacle served as the heart of Israelite society. It was where the people came together to connect with God and each other. Symbolism in the tabernacle's design Reflection of divine beauty and order the meticulous details in the design and construction of the tabernacle reflected the beauty and order of God's creation. Every aspect from the materials used to the specific dimensions was symbolic and purposely mirroring the precision and care in the divine plan. Sacred Space in the Profane World the tabernacle stood as the sacred space amidst the mundane reality of Israelite's existence. It was a constant reminder of the sacred amidst and secular space where the divine intersected with the ordinary. The glory of the Lord in the tabernacle, divine presence and approval. The feeling of the tabernacle in the glory of the Lord signified God's approval of the structure as his dwelling place. It was a visible affirmation of God's presence and a sign that the tabernacle was holy ground. Symbol of God's ongoing relationship with Israel The presence of God's glory in the tabernacle was a continual reminder of the covenant between God and Israel. It symbolized the ongoing relationship and commitment between God and His people. Theological and spiritual implications, a model for divine human interaction. The tabernacle set a precedent for how humans interact with the divine. It was a place where people could approach God, offer sacrifices, and seek guidance, foreshadowing Christ and the church. In Christian theology, the tabernacle is often seen as a foreshadowing of Christ 
who is considered the ultimate manifestation of God's presence among humanity. The church, as the body of believers, continues this concept of being a spiritual tabernacle or dwelling place of God. Conclusion, a testament to God's presence and faithfulness. The tabernacle stands as a powerful testament to God's desire to dwell among His people, His commitment to beauty and order, and His ongoing presence and faithfulness. It symbolizes the intersection of the divine with the mundane and served as a model for worship and communion with God. The tabernacle's significance extends beyond its historical and cultural context, offering profound insights into the nature of God's relationship with humanity. Christian Interpretation, the Eucharist as God's Presence, the Eucharist in Christian Worship, Fulfillment of Divine Presence. In Christian theology, the Eucharist is regarded as the fulfillment of continuation of God's presence manifested in the Old Testament tabernacle. It represents the real presence, the spiritual presence of Christ in the midst of believers, continual access to the divine. Unlike the tabernacle, which was bound to, specific, to a specific location and time, the Eucharist offers believers a continuous accessible way to connect with the divine. It bridges the gap between the earthly and the divine allowing for the for a tangible experience of God's presence the real presence of Christ transcendence in the mundane the eucharist embodies the concept of God's of God making himself present in the ordinary elements of bread and wine this transformation echoes the old testament notion of God dwelling in the tabernacle among his people a living encounter during the Eucharist, the believers are believed to encounter the living Christ. This is not just a symbolic presence, but a real and transformative encounter, parallel, paralleling the transformative presence of God in the tabernacle. Eucharistic as a spiritual tabernacle, sacred space for divine encounter. Just as the tabernacle was a sacred space for encountering God and the Eucharist serves as the spiritual tabernacle where believers meet and commune with Christ. Community and, the com and communion. The Eucharist brings believers together in a community reminiscent of the Israelite community gathered around the tabernacle. It is a communal participation in the divine fostering of unity and shared spiritual experience. Theological significance. Incarnation and continuation. The Eucharist is a manifestation of the incarnation, Christ's presence in the world, and with uh, and a continuation of the His salvific work. It is a profound expression of God's desire to be intimately involved in the lives of the believers. Sustenance and spiritual nourishment. Just as the manna in the wilderness and the bread in the tabernacle provided physical sustenance, the Eucharist provides spiritual nourishment, sustaining believers in their faith journey. Conclusion A Manifestation of God's Presence The Eucharist in Christian worship is a manifestation of God's presence among His people, paralleling to the role of the tabernacle in the Old Testament. It is a central element of Christian life, offering a direct and personal experience of Christ. Through the Eucharist, believers continually experience the reality of God's presence, grace, and love, reaffirming the enduring nature of God's covenant with humanity. Thank you for joining us in this episode as we explore the covenant broken, renewed, and the Shekinah. We have delved into the significance of the Golden Calf incident, Moses' powerful intercession and the renewal of the covenant, highlighting God's enduring mercy and commitment to His people. Their engagement and reflections bring this series to life. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss our next episode, where we'll be discussing the Book of Numbers. 
We will examine themes such as trusting God during the journey, the spiritual and allegorical aspects of the Israelites' troubles, and the significance of their own blessings. Stay tuned as we continue to uncover the rich history and spiritual insights of the Old Testament. Until next time, may you continue to grow in faith and understanding. God bless.